Today's episode of The Trainer is brought to you by Autel. The topic for today is a timely one, considering that we're right around the corner from yet another AC service season. It seems that the owner of this 2018 Audi A4 is complaining about a system that's just not cooling like he thinks it should be. Now, certainly it could simply be low on refrigerant, but there are other potential causes that we have to consider. The air conditioning system on this vehicle, like so many others today, is computer controlled. Not only that, but the passenger compartment is separated into three comfort zones and each can be controlled independently of the other. Now consider the complexity of making this happen. The control module has to know what the temperature is in each individual zone and then it has to have enough control over the air conditioning system to deliver the right mix of cold and warm air to each independently. That means there's a whole lot going on at one time. And that's why for right now I'm going to leave my pressure gauges off to the side and I'm going to grab my scan tool instead to start this diagnosis. The scan tool we're using today is the Autel MS919. Now the first thing I want to do is ask the control module in charge of the air conditioning system if it's seen any problems that I should know about. And this is going to require a scan tool that is capable of accessing these systems. That means a factory tool or an aftermarket tool that is equipped with enhanced, that is OEM specific software. As we've discussed before, if you have to use your scan tool in enhanced mode, do a full system scan to see if there are any other issues hiding that may or may not be related to the problem. There seems to be a few issues on the car. I see some U codes stored and some issues in systems that aren't related to my current air conditioning concern. Now, if this vehicle was in your shop, be sure to print out the report and share these results with your customer. The one code stored that does interest me at the moment is the B109231 defined by the tool as recirc door no signal stored in the AC system module. The code is referring to the recirculating flap actuator and points to a potential problem with the actuator or the wiring that connects it to the controller. Now the Recirculating flap is what we normally refer to as a recirculating door. It's just a difference in terminology. Would this cause or could it cause the concern that our customer presented not cooling as well as it used to? Well, let's consider how the recirculating door impacts the air conditioning system. When the door is closed, it closes off the fresh air inlet so that the air within the cabin is the only air that's passing over the evaporator. Now this gives the evaporator a chance to pull even more of a heat load out of the air and results in a drop in temperature coming from the ducts. Not usually large, but a drop nonetheless. If the door can't close when commanded, then that's fresh air coming in that has to pass over the evaporator and that's usually a lot hotter than what's already inside the cabin. So the evaporator has to pull that load out first. And then of course, since it's not being recirculated, that's an ongoing problem and the system isn't going to feel as cool to the occupants as they would like it to be. So yeah, I'm thinking this could be part of the problem. Let's tackle that first. As with any diagnosis, the next step is to do a little homework. When tackling a trouble code, I want to study up on the code to see exactly what causes it to be set. I'll also want to check on any related technical service bulletins, that's TSBs, in case there's an issue with the actuator the factory has already identified. And this is where I ran into a problem. It seems that Audi and probably VW as well, just don't want to give you all the information you need to service the systems on their vehicles. And I found that to be true with a lot of the European makes. 
They'd rather you buy their guided diagnostics through their OEM scan tools and subscription services. But not all of us can afford to do that. Now I went to all of my trusted aftermarket information sites. I even paid the subscription fee to access the Audi information site. And I couldn't find a definition for this code anywhere. So what's a technician supposed to do in a situation like this? Well, you've heard me say before, it's important to have a solid foundation in the fundamentals and to have an understanding of the system that you're working on. This situation is no different. So let's take inventory of what we know so far. This AC system is computer controlled and that throws some technicians off right from the start. They think the system is going to be overly complicated. But consider this, a computer can't do anything that it hasn't been told to do. It's in its programming. So let's take that one step further and let's think about what the programmer has to consider when setting up this software. The first thing I think we need to do is have some way of telling the computer what temperature we want in the cabin. And of course, this is a three zone system so we can choose between each individual zone or we can choose to sync the three together. Now we also have to provide a means for the computer to be able to monitor the actual temperature in these different zones. And that's accomplished through the use of temperature sensors that are located in the air ducts and the HVAC case. So far, we are able to tell the computer what we want it to do in terms of temperature setting and we've given the computer a means to monitor what the temperature actually is. So the next part we have to do is give it control of the various AC components and to teach it through programming how to actuate or modify their settings so that it can achieve what we asked it to do. Finally, the computer knows what it asked a component to do, but it doesn't know if that command was carried out so we need some type of feedback to the computer so it knows that what it requested actually occurred. And let's not forget, we do have to give the controller some means of monitoring the system so that it can tell if something's not working the way it should and end up setting a code like the one that we're trying to deal with today. My next consideration is to ask myself, how does the actuator fit into the needs of the controller? And I'm going to start by taking a look at the wiring diagram. Using both aftermarket and factory diagrams, I can see that the actuator has three wires going to it. All three wires go to the front AC control head, and the brown and red wires appear to be the ground and power feeds to the actuators, likely to operate the motors. Now that would allow the control head to control the actuators, but take a closer look. Notice how these wires are fed to all the actuators. They're all wired in parallel, which means that any change I make or attempt to make to one is going to affect the others the same way. Now this is getting more and more interesting. Notice how the third wire on the actuator, a yellow with green tracer, is going to the fresh air door actuator. Now, many actuators use a potentiometer to provide a signal back to the controller to let it know what position the door is in. But in this case, that wire is going not only to the fresh air actuator, if you continue to follow it, you see that it's connected to two other actuators before finally getting back to the control head. So this can't be a potentiometer type of system. And if you look a little closer, if we go to the factory diagram, you'll notice that the yellow and green wire is labeled as a LIN bus. I think I'm finally understanding what's going on here. These are not just actuators, they're little tiny control modules. And they're receiving power and ground on the red and brown wires coming from the front AC control head. They're also connected in series on a single wire LIN bus network. Now this makes sense when we think about what the code definition the tool gave us was, no signal. 
Now, without a solid code description, I can't discount the possibility that the motor has failed in the actuator or that the door or flap in this case that the actuator operates doesn't have some kind of mechanical problem, like it's stuck or broken. And I also can't discount the possibility that maybe there's a problem with the power or ground feeds to the actuator. So let's start our diagnosis the old fashioned way. Let's see if it works or not by using the recirc door function on the control panel. As you cycle the recirculation door open and closed, you should be able to hear a change in the tone of the sound of the air flowing from the vents. Well, I'm not hearing any change of tone that could indicate the research door is working or not. So let's grab the scan tool and use the bi-directional controls to see if we can operate the door. In addition to selecting the correct actuator, I also want to select the data PIDs related to the controller so I can see what the controller is seeing. One PID or parameter identifier that I'll definitely take a look at is Research Air Flap Motor Dynamic. In addition, I'll select two more data PIDs, Research Air Flap Motor Specified Value and Research Air Flap Motor Actual Value. The first will tell me what the controller is ordering the actuator to do, and the other will tell me if it responded or not. So let's activate the test and see what happens. Based on what the scan tool is telling us, there is no reported value for the actual PID, and the bidirectional test can't be carried out with the tool, with the tool telling us that the function's canceled, that the marginal conditions have not been met. Now, as technicians, we have to ask ourselves a few questions at this point. If what we've determined is true, if they are indeed little control modules and the code is for no signal, what are the possible causes that could lead to that code? Well, could there be a problem with the bus itself? Could it be a problem internal to the module? Could it be related to the power and ground feed to the module? And could it be a problem in the control head? These are all areas that we have to consider. Now, this is a situation that many of us find ourselves in probably more often than not. We have limited information about the system that we're trying to repair. So we, again, we have to go on our gut feelings, our experience, and what we've learned in this very important part of the diagnosis, the background research. So let's kind of go back over the potential causes that we're considering. First, could it be a problem with the module itself? Yeah, sure, there could be something internal that's not allowing it to communicate on the bus and that would of course result in the no signal code. Could it be a problem with the bus itself? Maybe, but not as likely. Why? Because the other three actuators upstream are functioning just fine and there are no codes set for any of the three or any problem with the bus network alone. How about power and ground to the actuator? Again, possible, but the same power and ground feeds are taking care of the other three actuators. Again, they're working just fine. So is it possible that there's some problem with the wiring or the connection at the actuator? Yeah. Is it as likely as a problem with the actuator itself? I don't think so. And then finally, you reach a point where you have to make a decision about what you're going to do in an attempt to repair this vehicle. If you base it on your experience, your understanding of the fundamentals, and your understanding of the system in particular because you took the time to do your homework, then this should be a relatively easy process for you at this stage. Considering all that I know up to this point in time, in my mind, the most likely cause of the problem I'm dealing with is a problem internal to that actuator. And that's why I'm going to recommend its replacement. Fortunately, the actuator is located on the bottom of the airbox all the way over on the passenger side and is fairly accessible. Easy enough to change, but not so easy to video. Now, the new actuator learns its initial position by performing the factory basic setting function, a function that my Autel tool is also capable of performing.
Simply follow the tool's prompts and it'll lead you step by step through the process. As always, after a repair has been made, you want to verify the fix. And we're going to do that very simply by going back to the control head, operating the research door actuator, and see if we hear that change in tone now. Yep, you can definitely hear it. Here, take a listen for yourself. Now the next step is to perform an AC function test to make sure that there aren't any other issues that we still have to address. And that's a test provided by the factory in the scan tool, and it's called aptly the AC function test. So let's test it first the way the factory techs do using the scan tool. If you don't have this capability or you're performing an AC performance test on another vehicle, you may still be able to do it without opening the hood by selecting certain PIDs. Set the controls for max AC. Close all the doors and windows and allow the vehicle to run until the interior temperature stabilizes. The high pressure sensor PID on your scan tool should read pretty darn close to what you read on your high pressure manifold gauge. And if you have that temperature sensor downstream of the evaporator, that PID should read pretty close to your low pressure gauge. If you see a major difference between the two, check the operation of the sensors. Remember, the controller can only act based on the input that it receives from those sensors. And if they're not telling the truth, well, then the controller can't do its job. The same applies to the interior temperature sensors. Put a thermometer in the center duct like we did old school and compare to the duct temperature sensor readings. As with the pressure gauges, the two should read pretty close to one another. If not, that could be a reason your customer is having trouble with their automatic climate control, even more so if it has multiple comfort zones to oversee. If you'd like more information on the Autel MS919 that I used in today's video, or any of the Autel line of diagnostic products, be sure to visit www.autel.com. And as always, thanks for watching.